Give me a second, you can just keep going. Such as Demon Attack. Demon Attack, um, it was an iMagic game that um, Atari actually sued iMagic for because they said it was similar to their game called Phoenix. Um, personally, I've never seen Phoenix, but I have seen Demon Attack. So it kind of makes me wonder, you know, were these game? did these games really exist? I mean, I've never... <laughs> <laughs> They're phantom game. I've never seen it like anywhere. <laughs> nah, I've, I've never heard of it personally, but um, maybe that's one we can look up later on to try and get a hold of and okay. see what these similarities are that that Atari claimed. Well, that one's kind of tricky. Well, iMagic was also known for um, they did a lot of games for in television, so a lot of You'll notice that uh, a lot of iMagic games have seem to have a little bit better graphics than some of the other ones. And iMagic was actually one of the the better third-party developers for the Intellivision. They actually made, um, I believe it was Atlantis. I think that was the name of the title. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, they were a pretty good early third-party developer. Yeah, and that was... Them and Activision really stepped up their game. Oh, come on. That's just cheap. <laughs> that one bottom one just keeps blasting me, like, as soon as I spawn. Now, if you leave them go for too long, they will fly towards you. Uh... There we go. Yeah, and so, you know, again, iMagic uh, had a very similar story to Activision in that it was started from some Atari offshoot employees who were tired of being pushed around and not getting credit for their work, so they went out on their own. And you see, you know, the effect that the, the parent company had. They, you know, release a game. They sue them for uh, stealing the design of Phoenix, uh, you know. Which they were probably working on was actually their intellectual property, but since Atari had such a lock on things back in the day, that they couldn't really fight that. They probably sued them for even using the hardware. Yeah, we're going to have to to find out on that, because uh, I'm curious now. Well, there was a negative result of the third-party wars with Atari, is... Once the copyright was given up, and they said that they could make third-party games for it, we ended up with a lot of shovelware, which was another proponent of the crash. When the shovelware's... Uh-oh. It needs fixed a little bit. It went out on us. The shovelware not just came from Atari, but also came from other companies as well. And then you had everyone that, you know, had even access to the technology making a game for it. That's when you see stuff like, um, Kool-Aid Man and, uh, Chuck Wagon Gang and tons of other turd titles. Like, Wizard Videos stuff like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Custer's Revenge. Even after mentioning Custer's Revenge, I can still play Sequest. <laughs> Sequest was uh, an early Activision game that was really good. Wow, I, I'm out of practice. Now the main idea here is you have to collect the divers and you get points for all the divers and you want to shoot the fish and the other ships. 
But you don't want to run out of air. You want to make sure you have at least one diver before you go up because it takes at least one diver to get a refill of air. So if you don't have at least one diver, if you go to the top, you die. Or if you touch the fish like that. But Activision was well known for making some of the best games for the Atari 2600. They created Pitfall for it, uh, River Raid, which we're going to take a look at here real quick, Sequest, Kaboom, um, tons of other titles. I can, there was Barnstormer, Decathlon, they made Enduro too, I believe. And I believe they made a boxing title as well. Alright, I uh, looked up some information on Phoenix there. And Demon Attack does look very similar, and the gameplay mechanics were similar. So, uh, I guess Atari had a suit, and apparently iMagic felt that it was strong enough that um, they did settle out of court over it. So... We may never know the full story on that. Did where... Phoenix ever release? Yeah, oh yeah, it it was uh, it was released. It was ported by um, into several places. It was in our well, it was in the arcades. It was ported to the twenty six hundred, and Taito got rights to publish it in Japan. And it said that they still own the rights and uh, released it in the Taito Legends package, which. As we talked about earlier, Square Enix now owns Taito, oh. so I guess Square Enix now owns uh, Phoenix. That is strange. That's some strange lineage right there. Yeah, that's what happens when stuff gets passed around over 30 years. Well, especially when Atari goes under like that. <laughs> yeah. When game companies fold, it's strange things happen to the rights. Now, this game is... Uh, as far as fluidity, has to be one of the better playing uh, Atari games. Activision had just such a higher quality for their games because they focused on that. You know, they they set themselves to be a creative company, and you can just see it. I mean, this game plays very fluidly. It's very fun. It doesn't have a point. You know, it it doesn't need to. Well, I was just going on about how the Activision games just held a higher standard. Abs yeah, absolutely. They, you know, they, that's why they started the company. They knew they could do better. And, uh, and you saw the result of it once they got a chance and once, you know, the, the developers got empowered with their own company, they made some of the best stuff. I kind of snuck right through there. <laughs> And there's pretty decent AI on this game, too. The stuff's pretty smart <laughs> for being an Atari game. Kind of, It has a set pattern, but they'll throw things at you at just the right pattern to mess you up. <laughs> uh, like those ships down at the bottom going the opposite direction. <laughs> but yeah, there's... Or that freaking <laughs> ship! <laughs> yeah, he just sped right towards me. But that's one of the Activision classics. And I'm going to throw another one in here for you. Thank you.